My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at a tool that is brand new to Photoshop CS5, and that is the Puppet Warp. It allows you to flexibly distort and manipulate images using a really cool interactive mesh. Let's see how it works. In this case here, I have a two-layered image, an elephant and a background. Now, the picture was originally taken with these elements obviously together in the same scene, but I used the technology in Photoshop, the content-aware fill, to help replace the background once I extracted the elephant. So making an accurate selection, refining the selection's edge, and then removing the elephant allowed me to get a background and the elephant on its own layer. Remember, you'll find the Refine Edge command improved in Photoshop CS5, as well as the ability to actually do content-aware fill, which we'll explore later in the lessons. Now, with the elephant on its own layer, I've got the ability there to manipulate it, and here's the background on its own. I'll select the elephant layer and choose Edit, Puppet Warp. Now, you notice that the elephant has a mesh grid here, and those meshes are essentially triangles that create a distortion map. You can increase the number of triangles to get a smoother bend to your image. So you do that up here. We can go ahead and choose Distort and get more points. And notice that we have a lot more triangles now. More triangles mean more flexibility as you bend the object. Now, once you're happy with the mesh, you need to add some control points to anchor down the image as well as give it some position to bend around. So I just start to click and it'll add some push pins. And as we go through here, we decide where we want the bending to occur. And I recommend you look for some logical points on your subject here, such as I'm going to do a shoulder joint here and down here at the foot. And we'll come over here and do one in the middle and at the back hip. There we go. Now you can add more points at any time, but having these to begin with makes it a lot easier. Now, once you're satisfied with that, you can actually bend the image by grabbing a point and pulling. So let's grab this down here and start to pull up. And notice as we do that the object actually bends. That's pretty cool. We got the ability to warp this. I could pull it backwards to make it look smaller, like it was going backwards, or pull it this way a little bit bigger and sort of pull that up into place. If we decide we needed to, we could add another control point there, and I could bend the trunk up a little bit more. And notice how those work together. Now, an important point here is the virtual depth of the different pins, and it may become necessary to pull an object up or back. Think of it this way. If I were to cross these two objects in front of me, depending upon where they were positioned in Z space, different objects would end up in front. Same thing holds true here with Puppet Warp. So if I select my pin, I can actually come up here and move it up and down in the stack. So as we pull that up there, notice it's now crossed in front of the elephant's tusk. Or if I push that back, it goes behind. So this pin depth or spacing within the Z axis is important. It allows you to assign the relative depth of the object. Let's just tweak this image a little bit more. I'm going to reshape the elephant, pull him down a little bit. There we go. Notice if you pull too much, you can get some distortion there. You could add more pins at any time if you need to. And as you see here, we're giving the elephant a more pleasant posture. Pulling him down a little bit, let's give him a little tummy tuck. There we go. It's a young, strong elephant. Joking aside, I think you see using the puppet warp, you can actually do some useful distortions for those of you who have to retouch photos pull in a gut, bend an object, move things around a bit. Now, that's looking pretty good. Let's just pull this in where we want it. And notice here that we can actually reshape the object. Now, it's getting a little distorted there, so I'm going to pull that back down. And that's looking pretty good. Want to reposition a leg here? Just pull that leg in a bit. There we go. And a little bit down makes it bigger. Pull this leg back and down. And notice how we're changing the object. Now, great controls here. Works really well for retouching. To apply this, I just press the return key and the image is now warped. Now, notice it quickly jumped and then pulled back. If you need to, you can go ahead and choose Puppet Warp again 
and notice it comes back, but you'll need to re-add your control points. So sometimes you'll do a few passes, maybe to get a few bumps there, and we'll pull that down. And as you see, different control points will give you different looks. And when satisfied, press return. Now the Puppet Warp works great once you've gone through the effort to actually mask an image and get separate layers, but you can use it on a normal photo as well to maybe bend the object selectively. Here's how. I've got a photo here, and if I go under the Edit menu, you'll see that Puppet Warp is grayed out. That's because we need to float this, so I'll double click and just name this Canyon and press Return. Now we could choose Edit, Puppet Warp. So if you're working with a normal flattened photo, you need to float the layer so you can actually manipulate it and control it. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and add some control points. I'm going to place them up at each corner of the photo to keep those in place, pinning it down. If I have a subject like I do here, I'm going to go around it and place a few control points to minimize the distortion around it, and that'll help there and then add some control points for what I want to manipulate. So in this case, I want to go ahead and pull a little bit of the bend out of the road. I can now grab that and start to pull that in, essentially straightening the road a bit. And notice how we're changing the image. I can go ahead and pull this down just a little, or up. That looks better. Let's just add one more control point here and round out the curve in that road. Now that was a very selective distortion. We can go ahead and hit return to apply it. There it is. I'm going to recrop the photo just a bit. Grab my crop tool and crop in on the image. Get a better composition. Press return and in this case I just got to grab the clone stamp. So there it is, S for clone stamp. Right bracket gives me a bigger brush and I can option click or alt click to set my sample point and clone in some missing pixel detail. There we go. And I'm just going to fill in that grassy area. And there we have it. We have straightened the curve in the road. So you see a very useful tool whether you need to dramatically manipulate a layer or just subtly bend your picture to remove some distortion or change the overall framing. For Understanding Adobe Photoshop, I'm Rich Harrington.